Hey everyone, it's John and Jackie, and welcome to Art News. Hey guys, welcome. Well, you know, the world isn't changing. Um, back in the olden days, like, to find something special or some sort of unusual item, you have to actually go and travel. You'd have to go to faraway cities or countries and attend special events like world fairs and things like that. But now, special curated items can actually just be sent right to your doorstep. And it's sort of a part curated event, part surprise, but it's catching on in a big way. There was one that I heard about, and it's called Try the World. And they, they take items from global cities all around the world, and they send them to you every month. So you, you get something, um, you know, without all the hassle of actually having to meet people or go places <laughs> or do things. And But, of course, you also don't have the security pat-downs and mm. bed bugs and trying to remember not even if you're drinking bottled water not to use the ice cubes <laughs> that are there because you don't want to spend the rest of it in the time in yeah the yeah i've seen those those subscription boxes mm -hmm. there's i know there's a site that i've, I've perused for christmas shopping called man crates and the, you get different you can get different boxes that have anything from samplings of whiskey to uh pipe making kits and cool. and you know, that sounds awesome. I saw I saw the pipe one on the Facebook scroll, and I thought, oh, that sounds like fun. You get to whittle with a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> There's one called the Apocalypse, Box, and um, it, it, it gets you ready for any apocalypse that's out there. So if you're worried about zombies, any of that, no worry. Every other month, they'll send you something um, to help you get ready, which is pretty helpful. You can't make or collect art if you're dead so Ooh, i want a chainsaw yeah it would be cool yeah, <laughs> you all those sharks. you know and if you don't have enough jerks in your life um, there's a company called three jerks and they'll actually send you a new jerky every month which sounds pretty cool they have one that's actually made with filet mignon which they're running out of apparently <laughs> and um it's pretty popular i can't imagine and um but I was thinking after a few years, it might get a little squirrely. I mean, or it might literally get squirrely. Because <laughs> you start running out like, well, wow, we really got to wild the people. What are we going to have now? So. Yikes. But this whole thing inspired us. And for um, every live show, we give away free art. In this live show, we're, we're going to give away yeah. a, a box. Yeah, we thought we would fill a box with some random things that we, you know, like. <laughs> and so we've got little canvas art. You yeah, can, they're you blank. Can, you can make your own. Yeah, you can paint on it. Um, a little art kit thing. It's like pocket size. That's cute. And the weird root beer drink that John always has on the show. That he's drinking. <laughs> Somebody is in for a real southern treat. Lovely. <laughs> and a little print of the adorable Echo. Aww. So uh, along with uh, some other things. So if you turn it, if you tune into the live feed, we always give away art, and um, we thought we would give this away. That'll be cool. That'll be fun. Yeah. Another uh, another interesting thing I came across this week was that in honor of the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the National Air and Space Museum is doing their tour completely in Klingon. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The linguist that invented the language, his name is Mark Ockrand, and he did the entire tour, recorded himself in Klingon. So, and if you check out the the links below, you can see a behind behind the scenes video of him recording it, which I think is kind of interesting because, uh, you know, he probably had to think of or make some words on the fly because you know words like north don't exist in Klingon and all uh, of that. You know what does exist? What? So uh, drastic god. <laughs> Just drastic art measures. Drastic drastic art measures exist in Klingon. I love that. Wow. <laughs> He's not me. Uh, you know, our wedding reception was actually held in Cork's Bar um, at a hotel in Vegas. It's not there anymore. But the entire floor was set up like it was Star Trek. And we had Klingons that were walking around the, the, the floor that was freaking my mom out. And um, Yeah, specifically the cleavage of the Klingon women uh, was freaking your mom out. And the Ferengi. Um, there was one Ferengi that was trying to um, um, buy... Jackie, but he was really giving me a low ball sort of order, so you know, yeah. offer there. So it wasn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't work yeah. out. But there was one thing though that was pretty cool. It was a um, the museum that was hooked on to that. It was like a real museum, and it felt like you were in a real museum. They had exhibits for like the 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 Mercury and Apollo astronauts for the space shuttle, the Mars rover, all that kind of stuff. And then suddenly, it, um, there's the warp drive, and 
Cochrane, the guy that invented it, and all this other stuff. Yeah, and it was yeah. Set like it was real history. And yeah, it was woven like seamlessly into the true history of space travel. It was, it's that yeah, was pretty cool. <laughs> and I love how that now there's a real museum and it has Klingon in it. That's, yeah. That's so cool. yeah. I just get excited about that. There's something else that excites me, and that's South Korea. Uh, there's a sculpture <laughs> garden there called Love Land. Ooh. It's erotic sculpture, and it's Dang. from artists all over the world that uh, sent stuff in there. The cool thing about it, well, well, really, the, the cool thing about it is that you can do whatever you want. There's no real rule. So you're allowed to touch the statues. You can climb on top of them. Um, there's there's lots of... Disinfect like, them. Yeah, yeah. Giant bottles of Purell. Yeah, no, it, is, it is anything like that. It's, it's a sculpture garden. It's, you know, but but you can take um, all the inappropriate, fun-filled photos and things that you want. You know, that your nine-year-old self would think was funny. You know, like, I'm touching his bottom. I don't know. Different things. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> so it's all silly. But the cool thing about it, though, is it makes me think that's the way museums were when they first started. Maybe not exactly like that. But when me, art museums first started... It was professors and rich people that would scour the earth and they would come back and they would bring things back to their mansions and set up little exhibits. And because it was a home, if you went in there, it was considered rude. If you wanted to touch something, it would be rude if they didn't let you touch it, which is, you know, vastly different than the way we have it now. And I think it's interesting. We've gone 180 that it would be in the past. It would have been rude to not let you touch something. And now the only time you can touch something is if the entire museum is rude. Which is kind of funny, although although we we do art workshops all over the nation, and in most of our workshops in museums, um, the museum they let people come in and touch things. So we, so we yeah. kind of design it for that. Yeah, so that's, that's cool. a lot of fun. So if you don't want to go to South Korea, you can go to one of our workshops. I yeah, guess. yeah. Another another interesting thing is anybody out there that might know this that the Paralympics are going on in Rio right after the regular Olympics. And in order to commemorate this, the New York Times is doing a series of op-ed pieces uh, from different perspective, perspectives of uh, disabled people. And to accompany these op-ed pieces is the art of Dadushin. And the particular one that you're looking at now is an op-ed piece by Daniel Simpson in uh, about being blind and his experience encountering a mother and son and the, the son was going blind and all of that. But... Uh, I really liked this piece when I saw it because uh, what it is for anybody out there that can't see it, it is um, split in half horizontally and the top half is of a simple white figure in a black background with another figure in front of it and then you mirror flip it to the bottom horizontal strip and that same figure is holding on to a guide dog where it's super colorful and there's lots of um, fi other figures in it. And I really liked this this particular mm -hmm. piece. It, it, it came out on the, the 14th issue. But it made me think of John and, and how when he got Echo, his different aspects of his world sort of came alive. So um, be sure and look in the description for the links and uh, you can read the op-ed pieces and check it out. It's really interesting. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Man. Hey guys, we're we're a couple of art nerds here. I mean, we we talk about art and we think about art every day, and which is why we're doing these videos. But I want to thank you for joining us with this, and please like and subscribe, and that actually helps a couple of ways. It makes us feel really good. I'm yeah, <laughs> and it also <laughs> lets us know what to talk about. You know what when, what you're into, because what you're into, man, we're probably into it too. So, thank you so much for that, and thanks again for joining us. And go out and make some art and have some fun. Thanks.